we are going to discuss about under damped motion under damped motion means when damping frequency is very less than the natural frequency damping frequency is low that condition is called under damped motion so the general solution of damped harmonic motion is x equal to a1 a raised to minus k plus root of k square minus omega 0 square into t plus a2 e raised to minus k minus root of k square minus omega 0 square into t where k is the damping frequency and omega 0 is the natural frequency so based on the value of this k and omega 0 we get three cases first case is k greater than omega 0 it is called over damped motion k equal to omega 0 is called critically damped motion and k less than omega 0 this condition is called under damped motion k less than omega 0 so if k less than omega 0 what's the value of root of k square minus omega 0 square it is always a negative number so we can rewrite this term as root of if we take minus as the common factor we get omega 0 square minus k square split this term into root minus 1 into root of omega 0 square minus k square root minus 1 is i and root of omega 0 square minus k square we put a substitution for this omega 0 square minus k square that is omega i omega so we put i omega in this equation mark put root of k square minus omega 0 square as i omega in equation 1 so we get x equal to a1 e raised to minus k plus i omega into t plus a2 e raised to minus k minus i omega into t now we are familiar about this equation so we can take e raised to minus kt as the common term so e raised to minus kt into a1 e raised to i omega t plus a2 e raised to minus i omega t this is e raised to m plus n form so we can take we can write as e raised to m into n then we take e raised to minus kt as the common term so we get a1 e raised to i omega t plus a2 e raised to minus i omega t so inside the bracket exponential term outside the bracket also exponential term then uh, for further solving this equation we have to convert this exponential term into its linear series or its trigonometrical exp expression here e raised to i omega t it is a complex function so the value of e raised to i x e raised to i x is cos x plus i sin x and e raised to minus i x that is cos x minus i sin x so we can substitute or we can write e raised to i omega t in the form of e raised to i x so we get e raised to minus k t into a 1 e raised to i omega t is cos omega t plus i sin omega t plus a2 into e raised to minus i omega t. What is e raised to minus i x minus i x is cos x minus i sin x. So we can substitute cos omega t minus i sin omega t. Then open the bracket. We get x equal to while substituting Therefore, x equal to e raised to minus kt into a1 cos omega t plus a1 into i sin omega t plus a2 cos omega t minus a2 into sin omega t from this take 
cos omega t as the common term then i sin omega t as the common term from these two terms take i sin omega t from these two terms take cos omega t so the expression becomes x equal to e raised to minus kt into cos omega t into a1 plus a2 plus i sin omega t into a1 minus a2. So we can substitute two values for a1 plus a2 and a1 minus a2. Here x is a real quantity. Means x what is x? x is the displacement of damped harmonic under damped motion. So x is a real quantity. So this a1 plus a2 and i into a1 minus a2. These two quantities are always real. So we can substitute a1 plus a2 as a0 sin phi. A real quantity. Then the next substitution is i into a1 minus a2. This is equal to a0 cos phi. Therefore x becomes. What is the value of x? x is equal to. x is equal to e raised to minus kt into. a1 plus a2 is a0 sin phi. So we can write a0 sin phi cos omega t plus i into a1 minus a2 is a0 cos phi a0 cos phi sin omega t from this we can take a0 as the common term while taking a0 as the common term we get x equal to a0 e raised to minus kt into inside the bracket sin phi cos omega t plus cos phi sin omega t. What is sin a plus b? Sin a plus b is sin a cos b plus cos a sin b. So we can rewrite this term as a0 e raised to minus kt into sin omega t plus phi. So, this is the solution of under damped motion. Then we have to explain the nature of oscillation or we have to explain the motion based on this equation. For this, compare this equation with the general solution of simple harmonic motion because it is a reference it is the reference equation x equal to a sin omega t plus phi in this motion body oscillate with constant amplitude this is the first case this is the equation of simple harmonic motion so compare this equation if it is equation number two compare this equation with the general solution of simple harmonic motion what is the general solution x equal to a sin omega t plus phi? First check whether the equation contains sine function or cos function. A sine function is there. So we can state that motion is periodic or oscillatory motion due to the presence of sine function. Then the second term is a amplitude. What is amplitude? Here amplitude is a0 e raised to minus kt because it is not a constant. One term is associated with A0 that is E raised to minus KT. We are familiar about the importance of this E raised to minus KT. If E raised to minus KT is there, there is an exponential decrease of amplitude occurs. When time increases, exponential decrease of amplitude occurs. So, amplitude is not constant. This is the nature of motion. So, among the three cases, over damped, under critical damped and under damped, in underdamped motion, body oscillates. The other two cases, there is no oscillation. Then we have to express the graph also. If we draw the graph of an underdamped oscillation, here the body is oscillating. So we can take time along the x-axis and the body is released from one extreme. So this is take positive end and this is take minus, negative end. Opposite side x is equal to minus e. When we release the body from this extreme, it goes to the next extreme. And comes back 
up to this height air resistance is there so amplitude decreases amplitude decreases then again it goes to the next extreme but from this point due to the presence of air resistance the uh, next oscillation begins so this is the motion of under damped under damped oscillation so here amplitude means this much length is amplitude so here this distance decreases here this much decrease this much decrease is here here this much decrease is here okay so the rate of decrease of amplitude this is the rate of decrease of amplitude it is based on the term e raised to minus kt exponential decrease of amplitude so this is the graphical representation of under damped oscillation so in nature all the type of oscillations comes under this category under damped motion um, means damping frequency is less than the natural frequency body oscillates and when time increases amplitude decreases exponentially with time from this expression or from this explanation we can state the effects of damping what's the meaning of effects of damping if a body is oscillating with constant amplitude or if a body is under simple harmonic motion what happens when the damping force arises in that simple harmonic motion that is the effects of damping here what is the amplitude amplitude the first point is amplitude effects of damping effects of damping the first point is amplitude amplitude is equal to a0 e raised to minus kt a0 e raised to minus kt means amplitude is not constant that is when time increases exponential decrease of amplitude occurs in simple harmonic motion amplitude is constant but when damping force arises amplitude becomes not constant it begins to decrease and the rate of decrease is based on the term e raised to minus kt then in this case we put a substitution a root of k square minus omega 0 square that is we take as minus of omega 0 square minus k square then we put root minus 1 as i and root of omega 0 square minus k square as omega what's the meaning of this omega 0 is the natural frequency and k is the damping frequency if we remove the damping frequency from the natural frequency that natural frequency term reduces that means natural frequency reduces to omega that is the second point first point is this one second point natural frequency omega is omega 0 square minus k square normally natural frequency is omega 0 square this value reduces to omega what happens when frequency reduces frequency decreases time period increases so when uh, and the effects of damping one one more effect is there that is when damped force arises time period that is the time taken to complete one oscillation it increases time period the third point is period t increases okay t increases And then energy uh, stored in this oscillation after completing uh, each oscillation the energy is found to be decreasing okay because the energy stored is used to overcome this air resistance so the energy stored in the damping body decreases after every oscillation these are the effects of damping first point is amplitude decreases a0 e raised to minus kt second point natural frequency omega 0 reduces to omega then if frequency reduces time period increases then the energy stored in the oscillating body it decreases after every oscillation okay section is q factor of damped harmonic motion q factor means quality factor quality factor means it is the number of oscillation produced by an oscillating body before it comes back to the equilibrium position okay before it comes back to equilibrium position means before it comes back to rest 
that is the number of oscillation produced by an oscillating body. When a body is released from one extreme, it undergoes oscillation. After some time, the oscillation dies out due to the presence of air resistance. Quality factor means the number of oscillation produced by an oscillating body before the body comes back to rest or equilibrium position. So a mathematical equation is there to calculating this Q factor. If a body produces large oscillation, it is not possible to count the number of oscillation. So we have, uh, so a equation is required to calculate the Q factor. So by using that formula, we can calculate the number of oscillation produced by an oscillating body. That is Q factor is equal to 2 pi into NRD stored by NRG loss per period. This mathematical formula is used to, to calculate the quality factor of a damped harmonic motion or a forced harmonic motion. It is a general formula. So we have to derive the expression for this quality factor. So we know the energy or total energy of an oscillating body. We studied in the later classes energy of an oscillating body. Energy of an oscillating body, comma E is equal to half K A square. K means K is the um, um, sorry force constant and A is the amplitude. Okay, K is the force constant, A is the amplitude. But for damped harmonic motion, what's the value of amplitude in damped harmonic motion? Dumped motion amplitude A is equal to A0 E raised to minus KT. This expression we got this expression from under dumped motion. So amplitude is equal to A0 E raised to minus KT uh, because under dumped motion is taken as the dumped harmonic motion. This other two cases over damping and critical damping, there is no oscillation. So we take under dumped motion as the dumped harmonic motion. Amplitude is A0 E raised to minus KT. So the expression for energy is E is equal to half K into A0 square E raised to minus KT. A square. So A0 E raised to minus 2 KT. This is the expression for energy. If we put when T is equal to 0, uh, what is the value of energy? When T is equal to 0. What is the value of energy? Energy is equal to E0. E0 is equal to half K A0 into E raised to 0. E raised to 0 is 1. So we get half K A0. This is the initial value of energy. Then. What is the total value of energy if we put half K A0 square as E0, half K A0, sorry, A0 square is there. Half K A0 square as E0, we get the total energy. Therefore, total energy at a time T. So, we can represent this as ET that is equal to half K A0 is E0, E raised to minus 2 kt. This is the energy stored. Energy stored in the oscillating body is E0 E raised to minus 2 kt. This is equation number. So we get total energy ET is equal to E0 E raised to minus 2 kt. Then we have to find out energy loss per period. So after one period, what is the value of energy? After one period, Energy is equal to ET plus T. This is after one period. So we get E0 E raised to minus 2K into T plus T. T become T plus T. So we can write this equation as E0 E raised to minus 2K T into E raised to minus 2K into capital T. This is E raised to M plus N form. First open the bracket. Then E raised to M plus N form. So we can rewrite E raised to M into E raised to N. 
So E0 E raised to minus 2 kT is ET. Okay. So we get ET into E raised to minus 2 kT. This is the energy stored after one period. So we can write E raised to minus 2 kT. Then E raised to minus 2 kT we can put the substitution ET into E raised to what is E raised to minus x. E raised to minus x is 1 minus x by 1 factorial plus x square by 2 factorial minus etc. This is the expansion of E raised to minus x. So if we put the value of x as minus 2 kT we get 1 minus 2 kT by 1 factorial plus 2 square k square t square by 2 factorial plus etc. But this is a very small term. Okay. This is this term is very very small. So we can neglect the higher powers. Then we get 1 minus 2 kT. So ET into E raised to minus 2 kT is 1 minus 2 kT by 1 factorial. 1 factorial is equal to 1. So 1 minus 2 kT. ET into 1 minus 2 kT. So we get the value of energy after one period. Okay. ET minus 1 minus 2 kT. This is equation number 2. Then we get energy stored as ET. And after one period, the energy um, of the oscillating body is ET into 1 minus 2 kT. So from these two equations, we can find out the energy loss per period. What is energy loss per period? Initial energy or the total energy minus energy after one period. Okay. So energy loss per period. Energy loss per period is equal to ET minus ET plus T. So substitute the values. ET minus ET plus T is we get 1 minus 2 kT. 1 ET into 1 minus 2 kT. Open the bracket. ET minus ET into sorry, plus ET into 2 kT. Okay, so cancel ET minus ET, then we get ET into 2 kT. So we get ET into 2 kT. This is the energy loss per period. So this is equation number 3. Then we can find out the quality factor. Quality factor from we get energy stored is equal to ET. Energy loss per period is equal to ET into 2 kT. So put the values of energy stored. Q factor is equal to 2 pi into energy stored is ET. By energy loss per period. What is energy loss per period? ET into 2 kT. Okay. So we can cancel this ET and ET. Then we get 2 pi by 2 kT. We can rearrange this term as 2 pi by T into 1 by 2 k. Write it. Two, uh, write it separately as two terms. 2 pi by t as one term and 1 by 2k as the second term. What is 2 pi by t? 2 pi by t is the angular frequency which is equivalent to omega. Okay. So this is omega into the second term. 1 by 2k. 1 by 2k is called tau. Tau is the relaxation time. So we can write q factor. Q factor Q is equal to omega into tau. This is the general expression of quality factor. Omega is the angular frequency and tau is the relaxation time. So what is the relaxation time? Total energy of an oscillating body is ET equal to E0 into E raised to minus 2 kT. Okay. If we take if T is equal to 1 by 2 k where k is the dumping factor e raised to a0 e raised to minus kt what is k k is the dumping frequency so if you take this time t is equal to 1 by 2 k 1 by 2 k then what's the value of et therefore et is equal to 
e zero into e raised to minus two k into t. T is one by two k. One by two k. So this two k two k cancel. We get e zero into one by e. E zero into e raised to minus one. Okay. E raised to minus one is one by e. So this particular time at which energy value is equal to one by e times its initial energy. That is called a relaxation time. Okay, here we get Q is equal to omega into tau, where tau is called a relaxation time. What is relaxation time? Relaxation time is the particular time at which the energy of oscillating body becomes equal to one by e times its initial energy. That particular time is called a relaxation time. So by knowing the angular frequency and relaxation time, we can calculate the quality factor. Q is equal to omega into tau. Okay.